Hello, everybody. Happy Monday to you. Dr. Jack Wolfson here, and welcome to another episode of Health Discoveries with Team TDW. And again, I have Carrington Beecham and Ashley Swanson, health coaches at the Doctors Wolfson. Hi, guys. Ladies, happy Monday. How are you all doing? Good. How about you? Everything is uh, everything is great over here. We're in Colorado. Got a ton of snow last night, and the sun's trying to peek out. It's absolutely gorgeous. So okay, super excited. And obviously, when I think about snow now, I think about quote unquote flu season, right? So this is the the flu season, and all the propaganda that goes along with it. Go run and get your flu shots. Advertisements from CVS and Walgreens about come on in, get your free flu shot. And then, of course, while you're there, they entice you with all the other stuff that damages your immune system and all the other poisons that propagate the illness and lead you from sickness to sickness. And I lived all that stuff, taking NyQuil and DayQuil and Dimetap and antibiotics and all that stuff. And I lived in that lifestyle and, and whatnot. But uh, uh, Carrington, tell me what you think when you drive by Walgreens and you see the sign out there that says, get your free flu shot. I just kind of don't want to shop there and 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 be around those sick people. But also just I think it's profit. It's really obviously profit when you see um, how much they push it and how they'll offer you free groceries and free tons of free stuff to get your flu shot. There's obviously a lot of profit there. Um, but also it just makes me sad because I think that people trust um what they're being told and um and really think that that's going to help them be safe and keep their family safe and it just isn't yeah isn't it really something how i mean they're really they're really amazing corporations walgreens and cvs and target and walmart on and on they really care about us they really want us to be healthy you know they're, they're so willing to make us healthy apparently it, uh, they're going to lose money by giving us the flu shot which is <laughs> Uh, more more sarcasm from Dr. Jack Wolfson, if you've never heard that out there, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's, uh, I mean, the reality is, of course, is that, that is, they're just trying to get us into that store so now we can shop and, again, buy all the other garbage that's linked to it. And now we got the trash magazines to pick up and we got other, uh, you know, things, other items that we don't need to clutter our house. And it's just, uh, and again, one thing is that, you know, clearly the, the pharmaceutical companies know the corporations know, the pharmaceutical cartel, let's call them the cartel for what they are. Uh, the pharmaceutical cartel, along with the corporate business cartel, they, they know it's going to make us uh, even sicker, and therefore they can sell us more poison uh, down the road to deal with further sickness. Uh, they're not in the wellness business. They're in the sickness business. That's how they make money in, in those places. Um, now, I mean, listen, so, you know, once again, it's just all this stuff, I mean, it comes down from the government from the government, uh, from the pharmaceutical cartel, from the businesses that are just trying to sell us this whole fear, 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 fear of the flu, and so many people die of the flu, and all that, of course, is all lies. I worked in the hospitals, and and the people that you know die of of flu are already very sick, yeah. uh, and this may be something that tips them over the edge, and they come in with pneumonia or other things, but they blame it on the flu, and they say all oh, you seniors get. Uh, get uh, you know, get the get the flu shot, which of course never works, and we'll talk about that. Well, and they'll say those reports come out. Like one came out uh, recently about last year in Santa Barbara. I think like eight people died in a short amount of time in the flu season. And um, but it, it's very. Uh, they were all over sixty five, had all been vaccinated, had all had flu antiviral medication, um, were all sick. And um, but they can use that story to just um, make you absolutely terrified because the whole issue with um, the flu vaccine is compliance. So if they can just like bombard you with images in the media and then make you really scared, <laughs> you're more likely to comply and go in and actually get the shot. I think a lot of people otherwise would just even though they know or they know that their doctor recommends it, they wouldn't they wouldn't do it. So. It has to be motivated by fear, and so that's what they use. Let me ask you this, Ashley. I mean, I know that you have a master's in nutrition from Iowa State, um, but uh, you know, I know you're only 15 years old. So, what, um, <laughs> what, uh, 
what experience do you have with the flu? Do you recall any any flu like experiences? And tell me, uh, tell me, how did you feel when you you had the flu? Well, I actually haven't really had the flu. I've stayed healthy, knock on wood, through all my schooling. But I actually just had a funny kind of anecdotal story along the lines of you know fear and stuff. Is like one of the my friends that I went to school with. She recently came out to visit, and she works in a hospital. But she was like well, have you gotten the flu vaccine? Like, did you get it? And I was, I said, no. And she said, well, but like, how, how are you going to protect yourself from the flu? And it's like, she was scared. So it is, it all comes down to fear. And then it all comes down to like, okay, let's all just stop and common sense. Think about this. It comes down to immunity and all the things that we preach in our practice, like good nutrition, chiropractic, sauna, all the stuff we'll get into, but there's nothing to be scared of. You just have to boost your immune system and, you know, not be scared and do the right thing. So I think that was my story for you. I actually never really had the flu, so I've been lucky. <laughs> <laughs> you might have, yeah. actually, and it was really mild. Because yeah, that's I mean, possible. That's People true, don't even know they have the flu because it's so mild. Well, and I don't have, healthy. like, children either, so yeah. I'm even lucky. <laughs> exposed. So yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, you know, for those of you obviously who follow us on the Doctors Wilson and watch health discoveries with Team TDW, you know that I love to tease Ashley about how young that she looks and how much she's achieved in those 15 years of her life. She's actually a little bit older than that. I think she's 18. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and once again, yes, it, it really is. It kind of brings back again like that fear thing. And what it does also is that it drives us to think that we need to be dependent on the pharmaceutical cartel. We need to be dependent on, on Walgreens for our health information and, and disease prevention. And Carrington, like you pointed out, like what happened in Santa Barbara, and my wife is, Dr. Heather is very famous, you know, for this as well. You know, whenever someone talks about some sickness somebody has, whether it's from the flu or measles or mumps or whatever, uh, uh, she wants to know the health condition of that person beforehand. And these are not the healthy people getting sick like that. And certainly the healthy people that are following the advice of the doctors, Wolfson, and Team TDW and all of us on the health and wellness side, when you really follow what we're saying, uh, you're not gonna have any significant illness and you're certainly not gonna die from it. I will tell you, uh, and I've been criticized for this and I welcome all critics, uh, you know, that is well known. Uh, I don't really care what other people think. I, we are speaking the truth, we know the truth. And, um, you know, I, I, think, I think the flu in a lot of ways can be a great detox. It can be a great cleanse. You know, 48 hours laying in bed, you're not eating, you're not really drinking too much. You're kind of just sweating it all out. Hopefully you're relaxing, um, you know, and again, you're sleeping and just letting your body re you know, recover and recover at will. 48 hours after I've had the flu, maybe, I don't know, it was probably four or five years ago. Uh, in 48 hours, I was down and out, and then boom, I'm back and <laughs> feel great. So, uh, uh, you know, there, there we go. That, that is the best way to do it. I have, I have not gotten a flu shot uh, probably since I was in medical school. Um, and, uh, you know, listen, everybody makes, makes, mistake, makes mistakes. Um, Carrington, let's talk about boosting the immune system, okay? And, and I'll bring it back to Ashley about, about food that we can use to boost the immune system. But Carrington, maybe tell me, give me some words about how important sleep and sunshine is for immune boosting. Yeah, well, and, and to first start out with, you can talk about why we get sick in the first place. Like, usually you can uh, pinpoint it back to a really stressful week or a week where you just had a couple of nights where you did not sleep, or you um, ate a bunch of candy. Like it's shocking to me with small children, how many people are, how many of my kids classmates are out sick the week after Halloween because of that just onslaught of late night and a lot of candy. So um, I, these are reasons why we get sick. It's not, um, you know, a mystery. They're onslaughts to the immune system, but stress is probably the worst. Um, and then to boost immunity, we have tons of literature to support um, a huge amount of research to support that if you boost the whole body and you boost the immune system, you're not going to get sick. Um, so sunshine, getting out in the sunshine, um, vitamin D is, is well known and well researched in its ability to fight um, upper respiratory infections specifically, builds 
uh, peptides in the lungs and um, vitamin D supplementation has been proven to um, cut respiratory infections by like 90%. So if we're talking about efficacy, uh, there's way more research to prove um, sunshine is going to keep you well than the flu vaccine. Uh, so get sleep. Don't skip out on sleep as we get into the holidays and you have late night parties and things like that. Be super aware of rest. And um, as it gets colder, uh, still go out in the sun. <laughs> get get some sun on your skin. And if you live in areas where you're not going to get it, you need to be supplementing with some vitamin D. Um, but water, staying away from sugar, and, uh, and, and keeping your stress low is how you're going to stay, stay healthy. So those are great points, certainly, as, you know, as far as stress is concerned. Uh, undoubtedly, stress just causes so much damage. It's very clear that people with the most amount of stress have the least amount of, uh, you know, have, have the worst immune function. So yeah. holiday season is typically when stress is the worst. Uh, uh, therefore, you're at increased uh, uh, frequency of getting some kind of viral infection. You talked about getting sunshine. And even if you can't get sunshine, just get out into the light, the light yeah. to your eyeballs, to the back of the brain, uh, you know, to, to the back of the eye, to the retina, back into the, you know, the body and how important that is. And of course, holiday season tends to be the worst for the sleep, but it really is our most important. So really think about how, how critical it is to be the last one at the party uh, uh, I love to be one of the first people to arrive to a party, and I love to be one of the first people to leave the party, <laughs> uh, uh, if you will. Uh, now, uh, uh, Ashley, tell me some of the, tell me, uh, let's do this. Tell me some of the foods to avoid when we're talking about damaging the immune system, and then give me like uh, uh, maybe a few foods to increase the immune system function. Yeah. Well, you know, these are things we always preach again, but especially during the cold and flu season, avoid refined sugar. So that's going to be your number one kind of culprit for suppressing immunity and really feeding bad bacteria. So we know when we have these bacterial things, there's bad bacteria going on in your, in your body and flourishing. So we have to not feed them. And same with yeast. Um, so eliminate that. And then, of course, dairy and gluten, of course, are kind of toxins we consider to the immune system. Much of your immune system lies within your gut. And so we've got to keep that gut healthy and keep the gut lining healthy during these times of uh, cold and flu season always as well, but especially during uh, cold and flu season. Um, with regards to kind of like your top flu uh, and cold prevention diet, which we do have a few blog posts on that and we'll post those, um, especially focusing on things like turmeric and ginger and garlic. Those are essentials for fighting off the flu and really boosting up innate immunity. So they've got compounds in there that are antiviral, antimicrobial. You can do things like chop up ginger and make a warm ginger tea and throw a bunch of spices in. Spices in general, any spices, warming spices are incredibly healing. You can um, even use like cayenne pepper and put it in like a warm mug of water and gargle with that to kill off um, bacteria, but also to um, dull the pain of like a sore throat. It um, activates your nociceptors and it kills off pain, so it's great. And then along the lines, just a, piece, a basic paleo diet. So rich in all those vegetables um, that are going to be high in vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin D, um, and things like that. So we'll post the guide, but just focusing on immune boosting foods is incredibly important during this time of as long um, as you're also eliminating those key things as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. my, my favorite recipe in the wintertime is an age old remedy, of course, for health and wellness. And everybody is going to know this simple thing. And it's chicken soup. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just a pot of chicken soup, which is so simple. You get your nice, uh, high quality uh, uh, cookware, you know, that that we use. And most recently, we've been promoting Extrema. Uh, because after what we've learned about Extrema and them as a good quality company, uh, so we've been supporters of them and their price point is very good. Uh, the Wolfsons, we use a lot of Salad Master items as well. A lot more expensive on the Salad Master side. Great investment, but you got two levels there. In any case, you take out your big you know, stock pot 
and you fill it full of your quality water and then you put your organic chicken in there and yeah. you start to boil it. And then along with it, of course, you throw in the onions, the garlic, and then all the spices, actually, that you just mentioned, right? So turmeric and rosemary, and, and I love doing black cumin seed ground up in the coffee grinder, um, and then, you know, carrots and celery and other leafy greens can go in at the end, and chicken soup is so, just so fantastic. And then what, what I do is after boiling the chicken for about 45 minutes, I'll take the chicken out, I'll clean uh, all the meat off, and then in a separate uh uh, pot, I will, you know, continue making that bone broth with the chicken bone broth. And that goes for about six hours. And again, you can add that back in into your chicken soup or it serves for a chi separate chicken stock. Right. And this is great food and this is cheap. Yeah. How cheap is this, Karen? Yeah. Why can't everybody do this? Well, yeah. And um, that the, the warmness of the broth is a key factor, too. It's going to increase circulation, which, you know, helps the body, the blood flow helps the body deliver micronutrients where it needs to get to. So um, warm kind of teas, warm kind of broths. These are really, really good, especially when you're sick um, to I mean, people ask a lot about what to eat when you're sick and they think that they need to have a lot of food like oh my gosh you haven't eaten in a day like you need to eat something that's why you're not feeling good and it's like no you you don't <laughs> you can just stick with some broths and tea and and ride it out you know um the body's intelligent so if you're not hungry and you're not wanting to eat that's on purpose um so the body can fight the infection but that the warm broths the warm tea and this very micronutrient dense, dense foods i think people when they get sick they're just like they want comfort foods or all they know is like grab some crackers or something and um, foods that are just inflammatory grains and um, and sugar and dairy and uh, a lot of things that people are eating while they're sick because it's they, easy and it's they're easy not feeling well they're yeah. not feeling good and they think that that's helping them and it because they, they're like I should eat no just don't eat <laughs> or make something that'll fuel your yeah body. or yeah. make something that's easy to digest and will fuel your body and and warm it and bring some warmth and circulation back Love it, love it, love it, love it. You know, um, uh, for everybody out there, uh, we are, uh, uh, this is Health Discoveries with Team TDW. I'm Dr. Jack Wolfson, board certified cardiologist. I'm with Ashley Swanson and Carrington Beecham. And we're on here every single Monday at noon Eastern time. So make sure to join us with Health Discoveries. We're gonna give you great information uh, as we always do. And then we download these, we upload them into YouTube. And please share this information with your family, your friends, uh, let them know about about our channel, about the Doctors Wolfson uh, to join us. And if you're interested in health and wellness for the entire family, this is where you want to go. Now, right now, we are talking again about uh, us being in flu season, and I think also two things that are really important that I want to stress real quick is that this is really imperative for you to go see your doctor of chiropractic on a regular basis to keep your immune system strong. This is a great opportunity to not go see a medical doctor who's just gonna prescribe you pills and pharmaceuticals and vaccines for this time of year. Go see a health and wellness doctor like your doctor of chiropractic uh, for a tune-up. If, uh, if you get the flu uh, or if you're looking to prevent the flu, go so with, with the doctor of chiropractic. The other thing I wanna point out, uh, and I know you ladies will agree with this, is that the indoor air quality and how that can damage the immune system and how really important it is to get the toxins out of your home, get a quality air purification system. And then also, Ashley, if you would post the link to the mold test, because uh, if you are being exposed to indoor to a heavy dose of indoor mold, your immune system is done. That's in the literature. And you want to talk about how you're going to be able, how your body is not going to be able to fight off a virus, bacteria, parasite, or whatever. When you were exposed to mold, you're you're in major trouble. So Ashley, you know, put that into into the notes here as well, so people can see how to order that test. I highly recommend that. Uh, Carrington, what do you think about indoor air quality and and suppressing the immune system? Well, I think it's really critical. I mean, I I think that we have to consider that when our natural state of our body is health, like our 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 
body wants to be healthy, our natural state. So we have to look at our environment and understand that our environment is having a daily impact on ourselves. I mean, I think people are conscious and aware of, you know, air quality outside, you know, you get alerts on your phone and things like that. And they try to not be out when air quality is bad. Like in Arizona, we have all the monsoons and things like that. But um, the air inside your home is what you're breathing most of the time. And it is much more toxic than the air outside. Usually we have mycotoxins from mold that are so common now in people's homes. We have, uh, off gassing from, from our, Looks like I lost Carrington uh, and Ashley. They froze up here, so we'll look them to uh, for them to get back into it. Now, um, again, once we you know, we get uh, Carrington on, I'm gonna, I want to talk to you real quick about what is inside of the flu shots. So I'm going to jump onto a share screen here and um, uh, do the share screen. Here we go, and I'm going to get into here share. Uh, new, that would not be, uh, it. Let's see here. Um, stop sharing. Let's go to, um, share screen here. Okay. And then now I'll get into here. Okay. So here we are with the flu shot insert. And this is from, uh, Fluverin. Um, this is, uh, one of the many different flu shot varieties. Do not get this flu shot if you have a history of severe allergic reactions to egg proteins. Why would you have issues with egg proteins? Because that is what vaccines are grown on and then they inject them into you and now you're allergic to eggs. So in case you're wondering why you have egg issues, uh, it's uh, from, from the vaccines. Uh, also, uh, using a, a, a in here, they also give us a warning about allergies to rubber. So think about that as well as far as allergies to uh, rubber and what that does. Um, okay. Also, they love to inject uh, the flu shots into pregnant women, nursing mothers, or children less and, and children less than four years of age. But yet safety and effectiveness of fluverin have not been established in pregnant women, nursing mothers, or children less than four years of age. Uh, guys, you can't make this stuff up. Cannot make this stuff up on this absolute poison. All right, more stuff here. Um, serious uh, allergic reactions, including anaphylactic shock, have been obser observed in post-market surveillance. Look at this. After vaccination, the subjects, uh, this is in clinical trials, were observed for 30 minutes. Wow, that's great. They were observed for 30 minutes. Um and then they, uh, uh, and then afterwards, they were sent home with a diary card for three days following the vaccination to collect uh, local and systemic reactions over those three days period. And you can see here, uh, 1,200, uh, you know, 60 recipients. Um, not, not really a lot, a lot of data of what they're looking at over all the different years. It really, if you think that this stuff has been studied, uh, it's an absolute joke. The placebo often contains the same poisons as the active uh, injection and more warnings and stuff like that in this long document here. Uh, inside of the uh, uh, flu vaccine uh, is uh, thimerosal. And this is, this is the single, this is a pre-filled. So there's still thimerosal uh, that is in there, trace amounts of thimerosal, which is mercury, okay? If you get the multi-dose dose, uh, vial formulation, uh, not only do you get a hefty serving of mercury, 25 micrograms of mercury, you also, again, get these uh, egg proteins. Uh, this can also be in the pre-filled syringe, may contain residual amounts of egg proteins, antibiotics, antibiotics, beta propiolactone, and uh, this uh, <laughs> uh Nanil, uh, nanil uh, ethoxylate, right? If you can't, if you can't pronounce it, uh, forgive me for not practicing my uh, pronunciation of uh, some of the poisons that they're injecting into you. So, and then just more data here, uh, on how toxic, uh, this product is. So, of course, it is an absolute, uh, moneymaker, uh, for, for the pharmaceutical companies. You know that, I know that. And here we are back live. So hopefully you enjoyed 
uh, that, uh, that presentation here. Hey, Wendy Keedy, Linda King, great to hear you and see you. I hope you're enjoying uh, the presentation. Um, and that is the story with the flu vaccine. So those are the poisons you're gonna be getting in the flu vaccine. Uh, now I wanna talk to you about supplements to boost the immune system. I'm gonna see if we can get Carrington and Ashley back. Okay, the girls are back. Uh, welcome back, uh, ladies. Okay, so Hi. what I did is that I talked, about, no worries. I talked about uh, I talked about the flu vaccine and the stuff that's in there. Just as yeah. a review, the flu vaccine I showed. First of all, um, for people that have egg allergy, they they warn you to be careful because obviously the vaccines, the reason why you have an egg allergy is because you were vaccinated because the mm -hmm. vaccines are grown on egg, uh, egg a medium. So now you have those proteins in your body and now your immune system attacks it. There's also, if you have any issues with latex rubber, they warn you of that. And then it, it tells you on the package inserts, not been studied on pregnant women, nursing women, or children less than four years of age, yet they recommend the vaccine for all those people. And then of course it tells you the ingredients of, of uh, both the pre-filled syringes and the multi-use uh, vials. All of them contain, uh, contain thimerosal, which is mercury. All of them contain antibiotics, uh, uh, egg proteins, uh, and then also other agents as well that are in there. So just so we know what you're getting injected into your body. Can you imagine that they inject this into uh, new into, into young babies that do not have a fully formed or even close immune system? That's why they rely on their brother's milk, breast milk for, for antibodies and protection, that they, that they inject this into a child that does not have a functioning and fully formed or even close blood brain barrier and they inject this again, it's, it's, it's absolutely um, 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 uh, moronic, demonic, uh, cruel of what they're doing to these children. It just, it just really just makes and it And it doesn't work. <laughs> and not only that, it doesn't work. But the, flu, the flu virus is an RNA virus that can, you know, rapidly mutate. So it can mutate within the same season. So they're basing the the flu shot off last year's, you know, main virus. Uh, and they, it can mutate by the time it gets to us. So uh, it's very ineffective. And they admit that, you know, like last year's flu shot was only 9% effective, according to the CDC. Uh, and uh, they they still they'll say that in the same article it's nine percent effective, but still everybody go get your flu shot, you know. Or these people all died from the flu even though they had the flu vaccine, but everybody still go get your flu shot. Instead, the CDC could be promoting sunshine and sleep and teaching about nutrition and other nutritional supplements that definitely provide way more protection and prevention against the flu, like vitamin D and vitamin A and all of these things where we have the literature, we're not just guessing here, we know what helps. So um, it's just a sham. <laughs> it's just it's just a very profitable, profitable sham. and dangerous uh, sham. It is. Um, and the whole thing is a sham. The whole system is a sham, which is why we're here talking uh, about all the propaganda. And please share this information with people that you love and just, just, just share the information. You don't have to try and be a vaccine expert. You don't have to be a health and wellness expert. Just share the information of the people that are the experts and that do study this, uh, like myself and my team. So thank you for being on. Um, okay. Let's talk about supplements to boost the immune system. And what we have available is our flu prevention kit. So uh, ladies, tell me some words about, about supplements that help to boost the immune system. I'll chime in as well. And then we can, again, as we go along, we're talking about what's inside of our flu kit. Right, go first. What are we talking about? The, kit? the flu kit, yeah. Oh yeah, well, we yeah, so we have a wellness uh, flu and cold kit. 
It has wellness dosing and then it has therapeutic dosing. So when you buy the kit, it has both of those things on there. So if you're wanting to prevent an illness, take the wellness dosing. And if you are sick and in bed, then take the therapeutic dosing. And we have this for adults and kids, I believe. Yeah. Um, so in our kit, we've got all the essentials to really build up your innate immunity and prepare you to fight off a flu or a cold. Um, we have vitamin A in there, our liquid emulsified version of vitamin A to really boost up the immune cell function and um, really boost up like the mucosal lining and prevent anything from attacking you. We have vitamin D in there and we have vitamin C as well, all immune boosting nutrients. And then we've got zinc. What else do we have in there? Um, well, the other thing that's in there, too, is we've got the Immune Boost product, which is a yeah, thymus, uh, glandular yeah. thymus. And the glandular thymus, of course, is that's where so much of our immune system function is, especially in the young children, is in the thymus. And what is in that product is actually neonatal animal thymus uh, tissue. So it's very active, very functional. And the reason why we private, uh, uh, you know, label that products from Biotics Corporation is because exactly that reason, because it works and they've done all the research over 40 years. And it really is just such an amazing, amazing product. Well, and something to say about that, Dr. Wilson, is that the thymus glandular is very vulnerable to radiation and EMF exposure. And so all these young children holding pads and cell phones and being in front of the TV and things like that, this is um, very much impacting their thymus glandular, which is a huge part of their immune system and where their T cells are formed. And so it's they're constantly being bombarded and the, the gland is being weakened. And um, so supplementing with that glandular through cold and flu season is a tremendous way to build up the immune system. That, that's a fantastic point. <laughs> Uh, I mean, certainly when we talk about, again, strategies to prevent sickness, it starts with, right, just like you said, going to sleep on time, waking up on time, getting to get in that light into our eyes. But you're right, for the kids staying off the technology and what that tech and the electromagnetic frequencies can do to the thymus gland of the uh, young child is absolutely catastrophic. So uh, make sure to get your kids off the technology for a million and one reasons. And one of which, of course, is boosting uh, uh, in the immune in response but if you would uh um actually go back to um or do me a favor make sure that you post uh the links to the adult cold and flu kit the children's cold and flu kit we got the yeah. dope inside of there of, of what's in there and it's a great thing to load up on during the season but it's going to have it also handy and i think uh you know, also the point is inside the kit is the uh argent and silver and argent and silver it's that that is like the main thing in our medicine cabinet, and that's the argent and silver. And argent and silver is it can be a big bottle of silver, it can be a nasal spray. Only from Argentin is the strongest, best, most researched company. I know the owners, I know the two brothers that run the company. It is a stellar product. And the, the instructions are on the bottle for, for maintenance, you know, just once a day, but for short term immune support, seven times a day. You take a teaspoon uh, under your tongue, you hold it there for, for 30 to 60 seconds, then you swallow it down seven times a day. If you have an acute, you know, flu infection or any kind of viral infection, tremendous, tremendous stuff. And people, they've been selling this for years out of Argentin and, just so much information on there. Okay. The combo of what's in that cold and flu kit is such a powerhouse. Like, I can't even, I mean, it is like everything you would ever want and need in a immune boosting kit. But there's also something to note is that when you come at viral or antibacterial infections, you have to have something that's an antiviral or an antibacterial that has things that go and try to kill off uh, those infections. And then you have things that can try to reduce the replication of those things. And then you have immuno sort of nutrition, things that are gonna build up your immune system that will help the immune system fight off that infection on its own. So it's not just about, you know, take a, um, take you know, something that's going to kill it. You want to take stuff also that's going to build up the immune response because your body is way more intelligent than we are and can do it itself if it's given the right nutrition. So this cold and flu kit has all of those things. 
things that are going to build up the beneficial bacteria with the probiotics that treat your immune system, things that support your thymus glandular, things to kill off the bacteria, virus, fungus, parasites with the silver, the colloidal silver, and then things to boost the immune system like the vitamin C and D and A. And all of this has tons of literature to support it. So um, you, I think when most people get sick, at least this is how I was back in college and stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get my Gatorade. I got some saltines. I'm going to get my Tylenol cold and flu. And I'm going to get the nighttime cold and flu. And maybe I'll drink some tea. But, like, that's all I knew. I just, like, would switch off, you know, every six, eight hours and rest. And I knew to drink lots of fluids, which I thought was, like, Gatorade and um, and people just like don't know that there's so much more you could be doing to shorten the duration. And then you go to the doctor, they don't test whether your, your infection is, uh, bacterial or viral. They just give you a Z pack, give you a, a antibiotic, cause that's like the only tool they have in their tool belt. And it doesn't work, even if it's effective against the, ba even if you happen to have a bacterial infection, which most, most of the colds and flus are viral. Even if you happen to have one, it's only proven to shorten the duration by two days, maybe. And then it wipes out your uh, immune system and makes you so much uh, more vulnerable to getting sick very quickly. You get another cold and flu in the cold and flu season. And I think that's a good point, too, is like along those lines, it's like people either don't know or it's like, they don't realize that they have to do the work. So if it's preventing or getting healthy. So when you go to conventional medicine, yeah, you can go get a vaccine and keep eating your standard American diet, but there's no responsibility there. But if you're wanting to actually be healthy, fend off disease and not just like acute illness, but chronic illness, you have to do the work. So work would be getting this flu and cold kit and taking it through the duration with all your unhealthy coworkers and just keeping your immunity strong. And so we're also here to kind of educate people because they don't know any better either, but it's work and then it's education to stay strong and fend off disease. You know, Karen, and also I think back to the point of the people that quote unquote died of the flu, you can bet they were all given fever reducers, which is the absolute oh. worst thing to do yeah. because your body mounts an immune response, including the fever, to bake the bugs. The bugs do not like to live in that in that very hot environment. So mm -hmm. it's very important to let the fever happen. That's why our body does embrace the fever. And then Ashley, if you would put put the big bottle, the 16 ounce bottle of Argentin also into the comment section directly, because I think that's not only is silver very good, again, for when you do have an infection, but also for prevention, this mm -hmm. used to ingest silver in our diet because it used to be in the soil and now it's not. So we suffer from a soil deficient, from a silver deficiency, much like we're deficient in so many other nutrients as well. So keep an eye on that. So finally, um, uh, you know, again, so we talked about the cold and flu kit. We gave people some great strategies. Uh, again, if you get the flu, eat those good foods, get the chicken soup, uh, don't eat the saltines and the Gatorade like Carrington was mentioning. Make sure you get tons of sleep, get outside in the light. is I know it's difficult and the last thing you want to do is get out of bed. Make sure you're well hydrated, get a good quality mineral water, drink some Pellegrino water. Um, and then, of course, the evidence-based supplements that we talked about that not only can be good for prevention, but we also have a therapeutic side as well. So let's wrap it up for another amazing edition of Health Discoveries with Team TDW. Uh, any final words, uh, ladies, as we go into this week of Halloween on Thursday and all the candy and all the junk that Ashley said damages the immune system? <laughs> Give me some final words. Um, stay away from all the junk. Don't <laughs> eat candy. Challenge yourself. We're challenging you. Find new traditions, new routines around these celebrations. Find ways that you can create healthy um, uh, rituals and things like that. There's healthy candy and things like that for your kids where you can try trade them out. I have four kids. They have never had Halloween candy. 
I, they, they trick or treat and then we trade it out. So there's ways to do that. There's, you can create new memories. You don't have to give in to, to all of it. So, and keep stress low and go to sleep and have a good week. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's interesting, right? They bring us into Walgreens so we can get the free flu shot. And then at the same time, all the Halloween candies on yeah. sale. Um, yeah. uh, Ashley, if you would also post a link in the comments about the blog post that we just did about, about organic Halloween treats. So again, we need to be very careful about the sugar, but if you're going to do it, at least do it organically with your children. So we got some possibilities there. Uh, as well. We got a question from Sarah Arnold and this nurse that came out about long QT um, uh, being triggered by a fever and she's a chiropractor and you know concerned about this news. First of all, long QT syndrome is not very common, number one. Number two, uh, we need to look at causation of long QT uh, and, and a lot of different uh, vitamin and mineral deficiencies can contribute to long QT. And then again, if you take an average sick person who's eating McDonald's cookies and cupcakes, doesn't get sleep, doesn't get sunshine, lives the sickness lifestyle, uh, yes, they may be more prone to problems from long QT. So again, uh, this is a small segment of the people that we're talking about, but again, I think there's other factors. To me, I always embrace the fever. The fever is always doing good. And uh, again, I, I think that's a small uh, segment. Lynn Hoffman said, what do you feel about the flu shot? Well, hopefully, I, I don't know if this was an older question or not, but uh, obviously we are a thousand percent against the flu shot. We do not inject poisons, including mercury and antibiotics. Uh, and other fillers and egg proteins into our body or that of our children. The pharmaceutical companies admit that it's not been studied for children under four, pregnant women, uh, nursing mothers. Um, and as Kimberton pointed out on this episode, the flu shots don't work anyways. And that's according to their data. So we always, no matter what we're talking about, we embrace health and wellness. We do not embrace the medical philosophy. If if uh, if if, we're, if it's a crisis, we go to an emergency room. For everything else, we can do this naturally. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, wrapping it up, Dr. Jack Wolfson. Uh, every single Monday, we're going to be here with you, giving you the best in health and wellness information from us, our experts, health discoveries with Team TDW. Mm -hmm. Uh, share it with your friends. Uh, don't be afraid to be the outlaw here. Don't be afraid to tell people you don't get flu shots. Don't be afraid to tell people the truth. Don't be share afraid it. to tell people. You know, th this is how this is how we're going to win the war against the pharmaceutical cartel in bed with the government. So this is how we're going to do it. Stay with us. The doctor. There's a better way. and safer way. <laughs> always, 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 always. Have a great week. Bye, guys. Bye.